Welcome to another episode of Distry. I am Skipper Kirk from Wallerscarp.com. And of course, with me is the ever talented, amazing, funny, and apparently goofy Skipper <laughs> Kate. I know. Skipper I'm Kate, how are today. you doing this evening? I'm, I'm fine. I feel like it, I think I've just been uh, very high stress like all week. And I'm finally just oh. kind of got that point where you're just like slap happy because it's been too overwhelming. So I'm good. I'm just a little silly today. So I'm going to pull it together, though. We're great. That's We're okay. Good. There's nothing. Listen, <laughs> if there was ever a place to be silly, it's the Jungle Cruise. So That's I true. welcome and applaud that. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. Mm hmm. Um, so tonight we're going to be talking about the hippo pool. I know we've already kind of addressed the hippos a little bit, but we're going to address them a little bit more. And then we're going to head into headhunter country, which is not a good place to be headed, but we'll survive. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so before we go into the hippo pool, though, can we go back a little a tiny bit? What would it be an episode of history if we didn't backtrack? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you know, I mean, the good thing about history is there is no real timeline. Just pick whatever you want and go That's to true. it. That's it's true. It's called time traveling, kids. Enjoy history. <laughs> back to, I want to say the back to the future, but no, it's back to the past. So this is actually going back to Disneyland's queue. And uh, we... We covered it pretty thoroughly, but there was a piece of it that I've actually never seen because I've they've never opened this part of the queue where I've been able to access it. And I've never seen um, any like POVs or anything be able to go to it. But I stumbled upon a um, a Disney video that was giving some a little secrets of the queue um, last night. And I was like, oh, my goodness, this is amazing. So we talked last week about Siobhan. Puffin Murphy, and we did confirm it was Puffin, both uh, Kirk and I found sources for that. Um, Siobhan Puffin Murphy is the one that is on the top of the um, the pole in the trapped safari, and she's a bird watcher. So according to her backstory, she is a um, what orthologist? Is that what they call those? Ornithologist, Orn yes. I was so close. <laughs> I an almost got it. It's an orthodontist, <laughs> but in... <laughs> And an oro orthodontist is one that works on bird beaks. They just put braces <laughs> on bird beaks and they just they keep them nice and straight. You know? That's very important. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, Puffin, because she liked to study the puffins and that's why her name's Puffin. Um, so she actually has a little nod to her in the queue that I didn't know about before. Um, so up, it's up in the second story, which they only open when the cruise, the, the jungle cruise is very, very busy in Disneyland. There's actually a canister of bird seed um, and a bag that says um, Jungle Air Mail Service and a bag that says Siobhan Puffin Murphy. And there's the bird seed. And then up in the above it is <clears throat> actually it's a pigeon a carrier service. So you can oh. see the little holes for the birds up there. Which reminds me so much of the ones that you see all over Liberty Square. Mm -hmm. so remember, we saw them on Columbia Harbor House. We saw them on that little Visa credit card area. We've seen them on the faux speaker boxes. They're all over the place. Yeah, they are also in Disneyland. You know, it's this is actually right next to the Tropical Hideaway. And there's little bird houses in there, too, for all the oh, birds cool. of the Tiki Room. So it's fun that there's a lot of extra birds there. It almost makes me think like she's also taking care of like the tropical hideaway birds in a way. Um, that's just my own. I think she would. About it. Yeah. I, think I, think, I feel she like she likes, would. She likes birds. You do that. But she's what up there taking care of the jungle, jungle air mail surface carrier pigeons. That's why she's got a bag of a canister of bird seed up there. I actually have another thing, but we'll get to it later. That okay. re reaffirms yet again, puffin, puffin, puffin. Shall we head to the hippo pool then? I would love nothing more than to head to a hippo pool. Let's <laughs> float on into the hippo pool, shall we? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, t I, told, uh, I told Kate earlier that I was feeling bloated, so I can <laughs> talk lots of hippo pool. Oh hey, my gosh, I just Sp got that. <laughs> Speaking of, did you didn't get it earlier? No, I was you were so laughing, busy. I wasn't though. even. You I know, I just the... laugh at you. Oh, you just. I'm learning something today, kids. You're seeing me learn that Kate placates me with like LOL emojis. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't even read the thing. I was busy. It was a good joke, dude. It was. 
bloated and moated because it was like in the water. Never mind. Anyway. (laughs) Okay. uh, Listen, if we're going to be traveling down a river, I would like to talk a little bit about the river that we're on that has the hippo pool. Yeah, let's do it. So originally it was supposed to be the Mekong River, which we actually do see later on in, they call it a Cambodian temple, but uh, parts of Cambodia, but also Vietnam have that Mekong River. But, you know, when they were going to announce that the one in Magic Kingdom, they were thinking of naming that Hippo Pools River. I'm not sure about Disneyland. They were going to call it the Mekong, but they were worried that it would offend uh, any of the veterans coming back from Vietnam. So you remember, this is like 1970s. So instead, they named it the Irrawaddy River, which made me then go, well, where on earth is the Irrawaddy River? So, of course, we got to do research on that. The Irrawaddy River, first of all, it's a really, really long river. The the Nile River is 4,132 miles. Well, the Irrawaddy River is, it runs like 12... 1,422 miles, and it is located, well, first of all, Irrawaddy means abounding in riches because it's the most fertile soil around uh, the area. Um, It's also one of the major waterways for commercial uh, use, so like shipping things up and down. And this area was also um, really integral to the British Empire. And this This is located in Myanmar or Burma, depending on how you remember it. So uh, if you if you want to know a little bit more geography, India, most people know where India is. India is in Asia all the way kind of to the uh, the west. Then you get Bangladesh. Uh, If we keep traveling to the east, you will run into Myanmar and um, or Burma. And then next is Thailand. So there you go. The Irrawaddy River. You can see it on this map. There you go. Let's see. I was just going to see what it said about it on this map, but it's really hard to read. (laughs) This is right after the elephant bathing pool. Yeah. No, that's interesting, Kirk. Yeah. That's why they renamed it. And that's why they never had the the Mekong made in there, most likely. They did have it in Disneyland. Instead, they have the Quango Cape. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Also, fun fact, the depth, while we're talking just about the river, that most of the Jungle Cruise is not that deep. It's less than four feet deep, most of it, right? This is one of the few places, though, however, that there actually has to be a significant depth uh, of roughly about six feet to, to keep those hippos underwater, which actually leads us to a fun medical phenomena, which a lot of people had for 20,000 leagues under the sea and even the finding um, Nemo attraction that's still over in Disneyland, which is called, all right, let me, let me prepare myself, <laughs> submechanophobia, submechanophobia, hmm. which is a fear of mechanical objects submerged in water. Oh. Wait, that's not submerged in water. <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry. Hold on. There. <laughs> <laughs> Better. <laughs> Yo, he's kind of looking scary, though, in this one, I'll also say. Yeah. Oh, my God. Super, super scary. I mean, they, they charged, which was really cool. Uh, not cool that they don't take um, cash, though. They only charge. So only plastic for the hippos. <laughs> uh, that wasn't that funny but it was I, to dude it's right too now. late to turn back now kate so hang on everybody here he comes <laughs> bang bang <clears throat> oh my gosh i i was just showing a few of the photos we've shown before the little historical photos of these little little guys it um, freaks me out how bad the tusks are. Can we talk about the tusks oh for gosh, a second? Yes. Yeah, we uh, mentioned the tusks the last time. Um, we, we did. But they're the they're large. They're actually largest canines in the hippo's mouth. If if like you're really into hippo teeth, which I know you all are, you can go to a place like Bone Clones and they'll get you replica teeth 
For only $650, you can have yourself a full set of canines and incisors from a hippopotamus, which remember, these guys are vegetarians, but they can grow um, from one and a half tons. But some of these teeth are 14 inches long, which is pretty crazy. So like here's a warthog tusk and here's a hippopotamus canine tooth. That's really interesting. But why on earth did they make them so curved outwardly? You know, because because there are, if you look at the bottom, the bottom uh, teeth of a hippopotamus, they they do get that curve, but they don't curve like outwards and hooked like they do in the Jungle Cruise, and they do not exist on the top of that mouth. There now, is no large, <laughs> large canine tooth on the top. It's only on the bottom. Well, and they have, they used to be way more wonky than they are now. If you go in Disneyland's um, and, and Disney World's Jungle Cruise now, you don't see them kind of sticking out quite as much as this. Like they were really weird angles mm -hmm. <laughs> back then. They seem to have made them a little bit more straight episode. A, so, so this is a picture of one that actually grew in sideways. So this isn't normally how their teeth grow. So like, I feel like they almost got a picture of something like this that was an anomaly yeah rather than the norm yeah you know what I'm i saying? agree i think you're because right i i i think they just blatantly didn't have a good model to to go off of as you can even see it here this is the showing the mechanics of the hippos and you can see in the tusks are sticking out in this one too oh can you read that can you read that caption it says uh, includes a fiber glass or a glass fiber hide and hydraulic cylinders that move the head and body. So it was like a piston that would just kind of shoot up a ramp, you know? Yeah, because all of these were not audio animatronics. They were hydraulic uh, powered, all these animals, we, which we did cover in our previous episode about the animals in the Jungle Cruise. But this says, here's how Hippo appears to visitors aboard the Jungle River boat. Boat cuts beam of electric eye to trigger animal action. That's yeah. what that smaller print says there. So that's how they know to, to do all the things they do is a little infrared beam and the boat passes through it. And then mm -hmm. the, the Hippo's charge the boat right. hippos are mean like well they're <laughs> they're one of the most aggressive animals in africa they're extremely territorial uh, especially against uh other neighboring bloats and like hippo families so um there's some like very vicious you know funny funny enough there's only two different types of hippos ready you want to let's let's get like cute hippo you want to do cute hippo for a second yes so, Here's regular, this is actually called a common hippo. I know, kind of a lame name. Common hippo. And then there's also, let me type in, there's a pygmy. Hippo. I found a cute hippo. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this little one. It's a little pygmy. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. He's like my stickers. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> little pygmy hippos. He's so they're cute. Little, but they're not, they're not babies. That's like their full size. They actually have some at Aww, Zoo Tampa. so sweet. Yeah, little pygmy hippos. They've got, they're that. like little rolls on rolls on rolls. I also have them pouring the molds for the Jungle Cruise hippos as well. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Fun behind the scenes hippo footage. <laughs> <laughs> Kate, do you have a couple of bucks you can lend me? Because I want to adopt this pygmy. <laughs> oh, look, my at his little, look at his little teeth. He's so cute. <laughs> I love it. <clears throat> oh, so I did. This is what they look like today in the Jungle Cruise. We mentioned those mm. those teeth that are sticking out, but see, he's he's clearly had some work done, and these they're not sticking out anymore. Yeah, they clearly got them teeth fixed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, should we talk a little bit about what's in the water now with the hippos? Uh, no, I want to talk just generalized hippos for a second. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like, I'm serious. <laughs> I do want to talk about hippos for just a second, okay? Because this That's is important. Fine. This is important to the story. No, don't be like that. Don't, <laughs> don't belittle me. This is a good, this is a good, they don't tell the story. Just hush. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ready? So hippos, they have no sweat glands. And you're like, well, why are you talking about sweat glands? None of the ones in the Jungle Cruise have sweat glands. Uh, that's true. 
But the reason why hippos are dominantly, they spend almost 16 hours of their day submerged in water is because it's so hot in Africa. So they, they have no sweat glands. So it's honestly a cooling mechanism. And that's why they're mainly in the water. They, they are nocturnal. So they mainly sleep also during the day. They're usually not awake unless they're being territorial about their, the other members of their bloat. Uh, and when you see them outside, it's when they are hunting, even though they are, they're herbivores, they're hunting plants, but they're <laughs> out and about. I mean, that's usually why, um, I mean, they'll charge after boats and they're very fast, uh, even though they're, they're walking underwater. Uh, it's like they're running. That's why they have the nickname, the river horses, because they literally gallop almost under water, which is pretty crazy. But yeah, people usually, um, they are the fifth most dangerous land uh, mammal. And it's, it's mainly because they're hardly outside of land. And when they are, uh, you don't want to be around them because they are extremely territorial. Yeah. These hippos aren't doing any running anytime soon. No, they are not. Just saying. Uh, and the other, all right, ready? You, if knowing that they didn't have sweat glands wasn't exciting enough, let's get further into their pores. They do <laughs> secrete a substance which uh, they have identified as, I'm not kidding, this is a real thing, hipposurdonic acid. And there's also an orange one called norohiposidonic acid, which is a natural secretion that basically blocks uh, the pore holes that they have so that they can retain the water that was in their body rather than losing it out through their pores. Um, so it like increases the absorption level of it. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it basically helps block some of UV rays. So think of it like a hippo sunscreen. So hippos have sunscreen. That's cool. Yeah, there you go. Do you think these so that's why they're in the water all the time, Kate. That's what I meant. <laughs> oh, goodness. A lot of these uh, animals that were in the water or are in the water for the Jungle Cruise, they are a bit of a nightmare for the maintenance team. Some of them have had their mechanisms replaced mm. uh, multiple times because of the, the stuff that's in the water will get in the mechanisms and, and uh, destroy it. It's just, it's tough. It's tough for like a hydraulic system to be underwater all the time. So yep. that's uh they have a lot of maintenance teams that maintain them so they can continue working yeah. and doing what they do like this. <laughs> um. Do you have more hippo facts? I don't want to cut you off. Nope. And more. thank you for asking. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, gosh. Um, for the, the story of this, we've already kind of like gone through the script before. Uh, but a lot of this is obviously they want to scare away the hippos, which is a really critical piece of Disney history of, of the storyline for us to understand the current storyline and where it is. Because um, up until... 2021 they were always successful in scaring away the hippos mm, yes they but, were but after 2021 the hippos they got the upper hand <laughs> and so the storyline we now see we already talked about all of these characters in our previous episode in the trap safari we went through um siobhan murphy and dr uh, leonard moss and um all, the whole crew um that is that is uh, up a up a tree, so to speak, trying to get away from the rhino. But before they got away from the rhino, something else happened to them. And so I love how the Jungle Cruise is like unfolding the story for us as we go. There's little hints in the queue about who they are, and we get little pieces of it. But then we start to see them in the Trap Safari. We're like, my goodness, how did these people get out here? And then we see in the hippo pool okay, something happened to them, but it's still a little bit of a hint. So we see things like um, their supplies floating in the water. We see um, the uh, paint supplies for, I don't have a great photo of it, but we see the paint supplies for uh, Rosa uh, Dominguez in the, the, the painter in the water. We see the um, all of the insect traps for Dr. Uh, Kon Chunosuke is in the water. Oh, and you have a chest that must be in Disney World, I think. This is in Disney World. Yeah, we don't we don't have all their items like that. We just have two chests, but I do have pictures of our chests. 
Yeah. So they're so all our La Rosa floating. just has like a lantern on top. And there's no paint though, which is weird. We do have the lantern, but it's floating on a crate. So okay. it's different. Or a torch if you're from England. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. <laughs> don't ask. <laughs> um, and then, so this is Disneyland's version. Then you can see part of their boat is also in the water. And you can see the hippos are positioned um, as if they have taken out that boat. And that is why their supplies is floating in the water. Okay. So pause here. Uh, I also have over here our one crate. <gasps> says puffin on the side of it how cool is that so this is walt disney world again uh normally you're looking to the right because the the crate for la rosa is over there and the first hippo you can see is there but i need to look to the left more but you can see our submerged boat behind it as well and i have another picture of that submerged boat um but what's cool about the whole submerged boat thing uh especially it's a call out to in 2020 when we literally had the Makanda Berthy sink. So, yeah, that was fun time. So, that was crazy. That sink. Mm -hmm. Like, literally, this is a Bomaconda Bertha, isn't it? Yep. Bomaconda Bertha. Bo yeah, Bomaconda. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, this is an actual boat. These are the actual like these, boats. Yeah, these are people. Like, these aren't animatronics. They're legit Oh, people. well, yeah, that too. But I meant like the ones that are in the water in the hippo scene. They're yeah. actual Jungle Cruise boats. And this is the back part of them, I believe, because that's why we see the the smokestack there. Um, And so on Disney World, it's in the left on Disney World. It's on the right in Disneyland because their mm -hmm. rivers are not designed the same. So it, make sure you look either way, depending on which park you're in, to see that half of the boat. And then the other half shows up a little bit later and we find out what happened to it. But we won't go there quite yet. Um, so, yeah, hippo pool. It's all part of the story of the hippos finally got their way. They finally made it after years of being uh, shooed away in various formats. <laughs> um, Can I talk about shooing? Can I yes. shoo them away right now? <laughs> yes. Right. So uh, if you wanted to shoo away the hippos, you're going to want to use a pistol. So I found in the SOP. So this is from DisneyDocs.net again. Standard operating procedure for the Jungle Cruise. There is a pistol procedures section. Uh, and I'll, you know what, real quick, I might as well show you. <laughs> Here's. There, there was also an interview uh, from a, a skipper who said, uh, because these are real guns, they're Smith & Wesson guns, uh, but they fire blanks. Uh, and they had softer blanks that they would use during the hippo pool scene. And they had louder blanks uh, in Disneyland for if they needed to uh, reach out for like an emergency reason, right? Uh, this is also just a great picture of Walt firing a pistol. <laughs> Although coincidentally, this is not the same pistol as the ones that are actually on um, the Jungle Cruise. Because I actually found an interesting picture of this. So it has the Smith & Wessons in a holster and they are tethered. They're tethered because uh, two of them were lost. Like meaning someone stole them off the boat. So they had to end up tethering. But you can see... The two different types of blanks over here is the smaller blanks and over here are the larger charge blanks if there are emergencies and they need to let people know and this is what the actual smith and wesson um it's this is just uh like what they use to shoot off the blanks it's not like a real gun like you're not going after people you know the uh but the pistol procedure here we go we have one Place the, first of all, these were also stored in the maintenance area. Uh, but number one, place the ammunition in the each boat in the bow and the front console. Two, set up the holster and safety line. Three, record the serial number of the pistols. Four, issue the pistol. Five, reload pistol after each boat has been unloaded or while uh, in the Cambodian ruins. A, open shell chamber of revolver, checking for fired shells. B, remove all fired shells that have misfired or put to the right side of the ammo box, anything that's unused. C, replace all empty shell holes with new shells. Four, uh, D, 
while loading and unloading revolver, never point it towards a guest or fellow employee. E, when the right side of the ammo box is filled with fired or missed fired shells, turn the shells to the lead. F, lead meaning like team member lead. F, shells fired, misfired, or unused are never to be given to a guest. Six, in normal use when firing the pistol, fire it low over the bow. Seven, when firing distress shots, shots fired high overhead when uh, taking boat off main track into the dry dock. Pistol is to be returned to the lead. Nine, spray the chamber and firing mechanism with lubricant before putting the gun away at the end of the day. And 10, return all weapons to the area maintenance office at the end of day operations. So no joke. This That's is no crazy. joke. That's like a whole page full of instructions for that. It is a lot of instructions um, on how to handle it, but obviously for good reasons. And there, there were other ways. So like you would fire two shots at the hippo. And if you've ever been to Trader Sam's, there is a drink. It's called a Hippopotamai Tai. And when you order the Hippopotamai Tai, if you've never been to Trader Sam's uh, Grog Grotto in, I don't know if Disneyland does it the same in their Enchanted, what do they, what do they call it? Enchanted Bar something? <laughs> Ours is Grog Grotto. I forget yours. Enchanted Tiki Bar, I think. Enchanted Tiki Bar, right? So at Grog Grotto, when you order a Hippopotamata Mai Tai, uh, you'll literally hear two shots because in this part of the scene, you would fire two of the low-powered uh, blanks off and everyone returns after two shots. You hear two shots of rum. Yeah. It's a rum-based yeah. cocktail. Yeah, they do that. So everybody Disneyland screams too. it. Oh, yeah. cool. Three shots meant that the boat is experiencing a mechanical difficulty. Four shots meant there was a medical or security emergency. Uh, and the boat is returning to the dock at full throttle. And six shots means the boat has derailed. Yeah. So, so they use it for like emergency communication because they didn't have. Yeah. And they and they still use it in Disneyland. Now, after September 11th in 2001, uh, the, the guns exist as props. However, they do not use them anymore at the Magic Kingdom. They're like set they up to a PA system. Yeah, aren't aren't yours though still firing like blanks or am I? They still fire blanks, yeah, but not not every skipper uses them. Um, I feel like I don't know this for sure, but I feel like it might be up to the skipper if they want to use them or not. Yeah, Um, and sometimes if the blanks, uh, they if they forgot to load them or they didn't load them correctly and they're not working, sometimes they'll just go like, bang, (laughs) they'll just like say the word instead of, (laughs) which I think is really funny. Um, well, they, they say that a bunch of times, like there are, there's like a whole entire secondary set of instructions. If the gun isn't working, like you'll go, like, if you're not using the gun, you'll say like, bang, bang, boy, that scared them. Woo. That was close. I'll, yeah. uh, I'll scare them away with this gun. And then they just take the gun and they go, shoo, get out of here. Get out of here. Like, <laughs> that's amazing. They, or, or they'll, they'll click it. In Disneyland, and you'll just hear it go like the gun will go like click as the revolver's spinning, like click, click, click. They'll go, they really hate the clicking sound. Yeah, I love that one. (laughs) Or, uh, and then there's another joke, but like I feel like you have to uh, get the whole process that they're they're using blanks, but they'll be like, you could tell they had a blank stare on their face. (laughs) (laughs) I know, I know. The people who don't use the guns, they usually go for like, um, they'll say something like, you know, scare them away. Like I did my last relationship, yeah. you know, like, I'm like, I love you. I want a commitment. Yeah. And then they'll like go in the water. This, that one's really common. I've heard that one a lot recently. I don't know. I, I love this one. Like, don't worry. I'll scare them away with this gun. Go away. Get out of here. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> it's the funniest. I, I would die if I heard that. Cause that's like, you know, that's not offending anybody. I like that. No. <laughs> Yeah, well, and I feel like um, at some point, too, when the guns did come back, they did instruct them to not fire them at the animal anymore. So we used Mm -hmm. to see that a lot, Um, like this wonderful photo I was showing you earlier of uh, this guy taking aim for (laughs) directly at the hippo. Um, But they don't do that anymore. They'll shoot them like into the bushes or up into the the trees like they don't shoot them at the animal anymore. And. You know. Well, the one the one skipper that we heard that interview from many, many episodes back who basically said he fired at everything. He would like when he would get bored, like in the 50s, because it was just so boring. He would just fire at plants or zebras <laughs> or anything like giraffes just to like stay excited about being there. 
<laughs> yeah, well, I can understand that. Now they do give you a warning too. They tell you to cover your ears uh, for your protection. Oh. And, and also for anyone who might be sensitive to loud sounds. So they'll say, cover your ears. They'll say it really quickly, usually before they, they do. There's, there's a bunch of jokes in here that I don't know if they ever, they're all along the concept of using blanks. Uh, don't worry. I didn't even uh, come close to hitting them. That was a hipposhotamus. <laughs> Uh, that's a good one they were left over from my previous job as a blank robber <laughs> <laughs> or you could say obviously after so many charges he wanted to make a withdrawal from the blank i don't think anybody would get that but i think that's really funny um our friend Jackson here is saying, yes, it's an official joke. So, and he also said oh, that cool. the, gun, the guns are real. He was confirming that because he's in yep. Disneyland. So. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. There's Smith and Wesson. I don't know much about the gun and I couldn't find the model exactly, but I'm also not that versed in uh, being able to look up such stuff. Yeah. No, so. not me either. Uh, I also do know that when we do the Jingle Cruise, they do say they're wiggling their ears to keep warm. You don't want them catching hypothermia. I've heard that joke before. <laughs> okay. Can I tell you a, a confession? Oh, confession please. time. We all need to hear this. I have never in my entire life been on the jingle cruise. What? And I'm sad about it. I know because I've me? never been in the parks. Like Disneyland stopped doing theirs and I've never yeah. been in Disney World when they were still doing it. So I have never been on it and I'm very sad about that. I mean, they still do it. So just come on down. And Disney World, I know. So I think this this is my year. This is my year, to, year. To, to plan around going to the Jingle Cruise. That's my only, because I think when I did it, I've been there like at the tail end of like Christmas hangover time in like January mm. and it's like not happening then. So yeah, they, they actually turn that over pretty quick. It's not that hard for them to turn it in and turn it out. The, the one thing that's so cool about it is I love that the skipper's costume changes. They get these, yeah. these hats that look like big Santa hats, but they're made out of canvas and yeah, they just look great. I know I'm sad. I mean, I've watched it. I've seen point yeah. like point of view and I've studied it and I know a lot about it, but I've never been on it. And it makes me sad that they don't do it in Disneyland on it anymore. Either is very sad. Like, why mm -hmm. did we stop? Come on. <laughs> we think with all the things Disneyland gets, they would have that too, but maybe this because they have everything else. They're like, yeah, nobody needs this here. You can't have needs. everything, Kate. Because the Jungle Cruise is not as popular in Disneyland for whatever reason. It's just very popular in Magic Kingdom. In Disneyland, like half the day, it doesn't. It has like a medium weight. It's crazy to me. I feel like yours is so much better too. Minus the fact that you don't have an indoor temple, you know. Yeah. But but I still feel like your ruins are really great, and the tiger joke is fantastic. Yeah, we didn't ruin it. No, you did not. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now, that was pretty good. <laughs> I, it's, it it was average. It was only average <laughs> because we just used the word ruin. Like if I would have said like the Cambodian temples and you said, yeah, we didn't want to ruin it, then that would be perfect. But I just said Cambodian ruins. And then you were like, yeah, we don't want to ruin it. It was double ruins. You know, you ruined it twice. You ruined my joke. <laughs> <laughs> um. I have a I have a piece of the script from Albert Awal, which I've been really enjoying going back and finding pieces from each part of the scenes. I didn't really think to do that until maybe I don't know, like six episodes ago, when we started kind of adding that into the fray. And it's it's a really fun because there's like little pieces in there. So here is Albert Awal, uh, the voice of Skipper Radio. All skippers should take note of the following changes. On the Jungle Cruise Rivers. First, it is no longer considered sporty to hold small children over the edge of the boat while traveling through the hippo pool. Contrary to popular belief, this does not stop their ears from wiggling. That's the hippos, of course, not the children. <laughs> so, do you have anything else for the hippo pool? No, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't. Okay. Um, so then we are headed into Headhunter 
country slash territory, depending on what they they have been both used throughout history. And, uh, and I, <laughs> and I do want to preface this section for, uh, you know, cultural sensitivity is why we don't have this anymore. That's why it was removed. And if you're wondering like, well, what was offensive about it? Um, it's, there's a few things, but the, the biggest one is that it portrayed uh, these tribes in uh, in Africa or wherever they were, you know, portraying them from as uh, not really the way that they were. And it was used as like the British colonists would have seen them. So it was like this whole controversy with British colonization um, of Africa. And that is the main reason why they're like, this maybe isn't a great thing to have this here. So um, that is why it changed. But we are historians. We talk about historical things. So um, we want to be sensitive to the fact that that it was probably appropriate that that changed. But also, we're going back in history, we're going to talk about it because it is something that existed. And so um, just like we do in history, we don't just wash all of history out, um, just because it was maybe we see it as maybe not the right thing to do now. So just wanted to preface this section because I know that it is um, a sense topic for some people. Um, but yeah, so um, headhunter country, we are in Disneyland is located along the Nile River. Um, and it is home to the Ambala tribe. That's what the tribe is called, uh, the, the natives that were there. And Ambala, I looked it up, it means the word color in Zulu. So that's kind of interesting, the color tribe. I don't mean because they have a lot of colorful headdresses and, and costumes and things. Um, Kirk is wrestling with our good friend. Yeah, I'm realizing it's, it's going to be so much easier to just lift this up. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I don't make, what am I doing? I'm just going to pick it up. <laughs> so so you can see lots and lots of color in there. He's showing some sketches that were from Mark Davis because a lot of these, um, these were actually from... 1950s they did have a version before mark davis kind of plussed it and added more so you're seeing this is the version of mark davis um mark davis's natives and they were actually inspired by um his travels to papua new guinea so the quote from him um says and you know what these folks were from new guinea and I hadn't been out to visit Papua New Guinea at that time. That was later, but I knew this art because we used to call it oceanic art. And it wasn't really wasn't until the Second World War that we discovered that there were many different forms of oceanic art. And I really, um, it was really the high point of it all. And I still think that it came from Papua New Guinea. And that comes from limited areas there too. It comes from the Sepik River area, the lowlands, Ramu River, tributaries of the Sepik. But you... But the um, Umbala tribe, you know, a lot of this stuff was in art books and so on. But these that I did first did in California, that's all African down there. That's what Mark Davis said. So Californian was a little bit more African in, in Disney World. It's a little bit more of the influence from Papua New Guinea. So they do look a little bit different, too, if you look in the, the pictures of them. Um they're not the same. So th these really do resemble the ones that are in uh, Disneyland. Let me pull that up for you. Um, this one, I think, is roughly the 1960s. And you can see a lot of those bright colors and headdresses and things like that. And uh, there is, this is the one that's more from Disney World which you can see is a little more Papua New Guinea inspired. But there's more from where these natives actually came from. The inspiration from them, if you remember back from the original beginning of this Jungle Cruise series, they uh, the inspiration, part of the inspiration for the Jungle Cruise was a movie um, called uh, The African Queen. And if you look in the African Queen movie, you will actually see um, that the, it begins in a camp um, in an East African village of Kungdu. So you can see this is actual still from the African queen and you can see these thatched huts um, made of maybe like st a straw like material. And this is when they're fleeing the German invasion is go. what's happening yeah. there. I have some other ones too that are closer, but um, you can see that they're 
that's where the hut, they almost pulled it directly from the movie because that one is from the African Queen and this one is the actual one that's in the Jungle Cruise. You can see how close, closely it resembles that one. There's also another connection as well to 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Now, we've talked about 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea before with the Jungle Cruise. This is a 1954 film that featured a giant squid. Chris Mueller sculpted the squid and other props. Bob Matty brought the squid to life using like vacuum hoses and a small motor and reels of piano wire. And then Harper Goff did the art direction. So these three were also involved in making up the Jungle Cruise. So um, Walt wanted to use the squid from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, but in the Jungle Cruise, but it was in bad condition and the wires that had pulled the tentacles would have been hard to hide. And so we began to think of using hippos and other animals which could be operated without wires and still have animated elements. So that's where we got hippos instead of a squid in the Jungle Cruise. Uh, that, so that's a quote from Bill Evans. And then Harper Goff said, Walt wanted to use the squid in an early version of the Jungle Cruise in real water with fish swimming around it, but the wires that pulled the tentacles would have been hard to hide. So that's why they switched from the squid. Now, why am I talking about 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? Well, so in 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, there is a scene where some cannibals wear elaborate headdresses made of feathers and they carry spears and oval shields um, that have been narrowed to a point on two ends. And on their arms, they have the stripes, strips of cloth or animal skin on bands on their biceps. Um, so Chris Mueller, who worked on both, he sculpted both the spearheads used by the cannibals um, in the film and also the similar spearheads that are used for the cannibals in the Jungle Cruise attraction. So you can see I have this still from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And you can see very, very similar to the ones that we have in the Jungle Cruise. So, um, so that's the connection to 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. That's really cool. Yeah. I have to admit, your scene was so elaborate in comparison to our scene in Disney World. In Disney World, we had a maybe about six figures doing kind of like a circle chanting dance up mm -hmm. on a hill underneath a hut. And then on the left side, there would be like an ambush that would happen where uh, they would pop out behind plants and make noise and it would look like they were throwing spears. Yours is so intricate. Not only you get a hunting scene in the earlier editions where they had... They had gotten a, let me see if I can find it better. They actually had the lion that they had caught. Oh, I got to talk about the lion. <laughs> okay. Well, I have a lion uh, thing story. You can oh, come back here, to well, it. No, no, no. You can go for it. But it's just, it's such a, an elaborate scene. Go for it. I'm, I'm curious about the lion. Let's learn. So the lion is uh, just like the ones, it alludes to this scene from the African belt, like we talked about where there was lions back there, right? So this is connecting this scene back to that one where they went and hunted themselves a lion and they got one. Um, but this lion, I have a cast member story from this lion where they said the, the lion got removed. Rumor was that the lion got removed because he was molding or had like asbestos or something like that. It was just like unhealthy. He was falling apart which happened to a lot of these figures. A lot of the times, like the ants would eat the, the skin on them. And so it was really gross. So they removed the lion, but they said, once the lion got removed because it was falling apart, we used, uh, to, we used to sometimes hang in the same spot that the lion used to. And most of the time, the guests on the boat wouldn't notice just the skip driving. So the actual skippers would hang in place of where the lion was and the guests <laughs> wouldn't even notice that it was them. Wait, like, like while while it was in operation, while I guess it was in would operation. go on scene, and they would hang from the pole. Not the guests, the skippers. No, the skippers would. Sorry. Yeah, they would go hang like this lion, um, because the pole was still there, uh, and the the guests would mostly just not notice, but the skippers would. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? Can you imagine looking over and seeing like a? Oh, I found one. So like the, the skipper's just hanging from the. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah. So it looks like he did get a little bit of like maintenance over the years, but yep. That's, that's yeah, he definitely got furrier. Yeah. And he didn't, um, 
he wasn't there that long. Like I can only see him into like the sixties. I think by the seventies he was gone. Yeah, I have what I've seen. I have pictures all the way up to sixty eight that looks like, or at least it's labeled sixty eight, and then it's completely gone. Yeah. And another thing about, I have a whole bunch of things about the natives, but one of the things is um, if you notice some of these natives have, um, this is a, a one from their later years, this might look familiar to you. The what headdress reminds me of the jester from Port Orleans French Quarter. No, oh, that's interesting. That's not where I was going with that. But yes, but if you remember the canoe scene before they had all their, their heads lopped off, yeah. Remember how we talked about it looked like like a Mickey? Yeah. Yeah. So this is this would be the Mickey and they also well, have don't, the Donald. Isn't this the Donald one that I'm looking at? No. It's no? similar to it, but no. I have the actual Donald's here. So this is also the one that is currently outside of Disneyland when you go into Disneyland, uh Disneyland's boathouse. It's hanging above the entrance way. Yeah, and remember we we found them and we were like, "Wait, we're missing one, right?" Weren't we missing one figure? Um, I'm talking about the one that's hanging over the entranceway. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe this was also on the canoes. In, didn't we find some in... We found some in Walt Disney World that still exist <laughs> on the canoe tops as well. Um, I don't remember that conversation, but I trust you. <laughs> but I do remember this was on the canoes. And now it's not anymore. But this was also over the entrance of Disneyland. And, um, but it was there. So that's, I think it's really fascinating because they were tying the whole story together with this particular mask that was like the Donald Duck one. So in Disneyland, it was foreshadowing of what was to come with the natives attack. And the natives attacking is like right when you enter into Disneyland's boathouse, you would see it. And then... Are you looking for it now? <laughs> well, it was the canoe toppers, right? Yes. And then they lopped that. So hang on, hang on here. I have a picture. I know the one. This is good enough for now without doing any research and talking about this ahead of time. Here you go. If you have that one picture oh, yeah. again of that here. native. I mean, they might have taken it and just repainted it. And then, and then your your Goofy, which we don't think is very Goofy, and then your Donald Duck. But I, I do feel like that other that other native also had a very Donald Duck. But you're right that that is distinctly the mouth shape is distinctly the mm -hmm. same because it's triangular, where the other one was more cylindrical. Well, can you find a uh, picture of the boathouse real quick, the front of the boathouse? Uh, Disneyland. <laughs> You got to be specific, dude. There's too much. The front of the, the entrance. I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah okay. I got it. Yes, I got it. <laughs> Disneyland. Like, come on, Greg. No, don't. You can't. You can't just say like, get the boathouse. That's not descriptive enough. Hang on, hang on. I'm gonna pull. I'm pulling them up. I know what you're looking for. We'll get there. There we go. I got them. Yeah. There it is. It's even got the top to it. So that's yeah, why that's yeah. there. It's a foreshadowing mm -hmm. of what used to be there. <laughs> yeah, get it together, Kirk. It's not my fault. <laughs> we need to communicate better. There's a couple places these shields and spears still show up um, around Adventureland. It's way more prominent in Disneyland than in Disney World. I think it's just a little nod to the history there. But if you are looking around, you can see they're not the actual shields that I can tell. I've looked for this design. This is right outside the Tiki Room, and you can see there's hmm. two shields hanging there. Oh, look, it's a video. <laughs> I didn't know. Oh, look, it's moving. <laughs> I thought it was a picture. Moving images. That, well, that would be a, yeah. Um, so there are shields that are hanging out outside that. It's just to allude to it. And that is the same thing um, if you look inside Bengal Barbecue we get these kind of like native masks as well. And these were not ones that I know of that were actually used on any of these people. For one, they're just too small. And um, second of all, like I don't remember seeing any of these designs in any of the photos that I've researched. So if someone tells you like, these are the exact ones that these guys wore in the Jungle Cruise, like that's probably not accurate, but they do Liar. allude. allude. 
I mean, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't be that strong. But. Liar. <laughs> Um, Check you also pants, see... <laughs> see if they're on fire. Put it that way. <laughs> um, you also see that same place that I was talking about before on the upper part of the queue. That is, this is actually really close to that Siobhan Murphy um, thing that we were talking about. But this is so. If you're, this is in the second story of the Jungle Cruise. If you're up in the queue, you can actually see in the window across the way. That's Harper Goff's window that you're looking at over. But you can see these spears that are hanging here let me see if i can make it bigger for you because this, this one cracked me up because he always looks like mike wazowski he does look like mike with <laughs> rise <laughs> one other place in disneyland where you can see little remnants of the these natives um is under rosita so if you're in the tropical hideaway she's also at the end of the jungle cruise you can see her from both sides but you can see there's also like a little tucker in here. So they have little pieces of uh, like the tiki room as well. But then they also have the spears in the back uh, that allude to the natives. Allude. Allude to the natives. Um, and could you find a picture of the natives uh, yep. that are where they're like blowing a horn? Because I have a little some fun facts about that. Sure. Let me just get I'm right on that. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, thank you. I got you. Here's your horn. <laughs> Perfect. So this is, they're actually playing um, the African horn trumpet. And I have some video footage of this, actually, which is super fun. Um, the trumpet can be made of, uh, a trumpet from the horn is of uh, mode. I'm going to try that again. The, tr <laughs> the trumpet can be made from uh, almost any animal, such as elephant horns, um, or sometimes it's a cow horn. Uh, it's used by the Akan or Akan people of Ghana and crafted before the legal bans on the use of ivory. So if it's made from elephant, it's before the legal bans. Um, it's a side blow Ugandan trumpet known as the Engobe. Engobe. I hopefully pronounced that correctly. If not, feel free to yell at me. But um, I do have some video footage of it. That is crazy because like when you... You look at it and you traditionally think about like these style horns, you would think it just gets straight, but mm -hmm. it's on the side. That's crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah, that's what that sounds That's like. really cool. Yeah. As far as some other little facts from the natives, um, do you know about the disco native? Have you ever heard about the disco native? Dude, just <laughs> pretend I know nothing because I feel <laughs> like that at times when it's Disneyland especially. So on the right side of the boat, you would see them in their camp. And on the left side of the boat, you would see the attacking natives kind of like pop up for the ambush, which this might be Disneyland. And so the first two would yell like attacks and calls and like their native language or whatever. They would just like be yelling at you. But the third one actually yelled, I love disco. And I was like, this can't be true. This has to be like a Disney what? urban legend. <laughs> but there were people that actually went on like behind the scenes tours when this existed that said, yeah, nope, they they showed them they actually did say I love disco. And so I've been trying to find footage of this any sort of sound that I could isolate to try to find I love disco and I have not been successful yet, but uh, challenge accepted. Yeah. Rumor has it though. And I think it's more than rumor because it did come from like behind the scenes tours. I'd say this is probably a thing like the FSU gopher in um, Splash Mountain. <laughs> Same kind of thing. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the I love disco native. <laughs> Maybe he was trying to scare you off with that. <laughs> and we also didn't really talk about the backstory of this at all, because there is an official backstory. Um, in the 1930s, the territory of the Umbala tribe was frequently invaded by the English colonial company, the Jungle Navigation Company. The company whose founder, Dr. Albert Falls, had named an Umbala territory waterfall after himself in 1891, turning it into the tourist location Schweitzer Falls. The headhunters took a habit of, of killing the colonists, most frequently those who took boats through their territories. Skulls were mounted through the tribe's territory as a warning against the British invaders. 
1931, Dr. Albert Falls's daughter and successor, successor Albert Alberta Falls, began the Jungle Cruise, which took tourism boats through the Ambala Territory. Um, and they also have one that they, they don't have it anymore, obviously, because they've taken all the stuff out. But one of the huts was actually a witch doctor. And if you're asking which hut, it was the one right before the falls. So this is the witch doctor's hut. But you can see the skulls on top of sticks there. Uh, but That's yeah. so cool that it's like right before Schweitzer Falls. Mm -hmm. So now you can just see the spot where it used to be. But yeah, that's the witch doctor's hut. We didn't talk about the skull canoe at all. And I, it does, there's not a lot of history for it, but there are some jokes. <laughs> and I feel like the skull canoe was like your first symbol that you were in the territory. So it looked like this. It actually changed quite a lot throughout the years, the way they painted it. But it was a, a canoe that has skulls atop it. And if you see... Uh, so the jokes, one of them was, here you can see what happened to the people on the last boat, which sank. As you can tell, they had a good time since they still have smiles on their faces. Or, we're entering headhunter country now, be very quiet. In that canoe over there, the remains of my last crew, they had a good time, even to the end. They're still smiling. <laughs> or, shh, we're entering headhunter country now. Don't make a sound. In that canoe over there are some of the natives' arts and crafts. Art's the one on top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there, was, there was a really lame uh, Disney World joke, which was basically like, that was my last crew. They didn't laugh at any of my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I have some things from Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar. Let's do it. To, to promote the Jungle Cruise film, so this is when the movie came out, the bar served a duck-based meal item called Everyone Duck Flatbread. Oh, that's fun. So that is one of the jokes that they would have, is like, everyone duck, everyone get down, you know, for the... During the ambush, yeah. Yeah, the ambush. I have pictures from the 1950s, like, when they put it in the 1950s, they did exist before they started making them, um, plussing them and whatnot. I do have the original concept art for this area, which looks like this. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what's cool is that um, the witch doctor's hut uses that still. Mm -hmm. And then um, this is the Disney World's, this is Disney World's concept art. So you can see they're more undercover, probably because of the rain. So they had to put little covers on them. This is when they were installing them. Animal chief. So that was them installing them. And then they actually have a video of them making the mold for the natives. They re used a real human being for it. <laughs> what? Yeah. Who they said was a model. This is them molding the animals. say i think it's weird that they call him like the hero of the hour and then they pull the mask away before we see his full face i'm like yeah come on now like, <laughs> but yeah i think that's really fascinating like they just had to like pull him out before he got completely like stuck in the model but that was the original one from the 1950s that we saw we saw them like installing was that mold of that model so i think it's really interesting. that's crazy mm-hmm well, I think I think that's it. We've we've survived headhunter country. Well done. Barely. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> I don't know. We can see if we can get ahead on next week. What are we doing 
there. So next week, we're definitely going to do the chimps, the monkeys and the chimps in that whole okay. section there. Cool. Um, and then I think we should at least do like the, the water buffalo and the python. We haven't talked about them like at all. And maybe even the um, the Kilimanjaro rapids and also the piranha because they're all kind of like in that same area. Maybe we could do the piranha next week. <laughs> My favorite. Yeah. But that's what I think we should do next week is monkeys, um, piranha, python, water buffalo. Chimps. <laughs> they're not monkeys, they're apes because they don't have tails. Monkeys have tails. Chimps have apes. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's okay. I'm just being factual. It's fine. <laughs> Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's uh, interesting. Then I'm going to have a question for you about that probably offline before next week because I have a really interesting Disney history question about that, but we can't get into ooh. it until next week because we have to talk offline about ooh. it first. So you can tune in to uh, next week's episode to hear about the chimps. <laughs> It's going to be a thing. <laughs> it's that the, they are. They are a thing. <laughs> oh, gosh. Any final thoughts there, Kirk? <laughs> I'm, I'm good to go. Do you want to, do you want to send us out? Give us a... <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> For those that are listening, Kate just put her tiny sticker boat and sailed it away across the river. <laughs> we have tiny voices, so I had to have a tiny voice. <laughs> okay. Uh, that concludes this episode of History. I Skipper Kirk. I'm Skipper Kate. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for this episode of Distry with Kate and Kirk. We loved um, heading through the Hippo Pool and Headhunter Country with you. And next week, we'll be headed for some chimps, some water buffalo, a python, and some piranha. So tune in next week for that episode, and we'll look forward to seeing you there. Have a great I can't, I can't wait. <laughs> it's going to be great. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. We really appreciate you guys hanging out with us and chatting. And uh, we will see you soon. See you guys. Bye. Thanks for hanging. <laughs>